Overlanding and remote camping has changed dramatically in the past few decades. It's no longer only for the people who are willing to seriously rough it, you know, only eat rice cakes and skip showers for weeks on end. Um, we, we have 12 volt fridges now, we have electric blankets. We've got all these little creature comforts that allow you to actually go out and even if you're completely off the grid in a remote area, you can actually feel like you're not living in filth. <laughs> and while some people might say that that's not real camping and it's, uh, you know, it's going too far, I believe that if it allows you to actually take your whole family out and enjoy the outdoors instead of being stuck inside, it's totally worth it. The thing is, if you are using power, you have to create power and that's where our discussion leads us today. While we've been talking, we've managed to boil a kettle using nothing more than the power of the sun. Yes, we're talking about solar today. We're going to be discussing how to get into solar um, and the pros and cons of a roof mounted panel versus a solar blanket that can be moved around. Let's get straight into it. There are a number of ways to power a 12 volt system in your vehicle but it should always involve a dual battery system. That's my number one most important point in this video. You should not be using power from your main battery when you're at camp and your engine is off. The last thing you want is to be in a remote area and suddenly you try and start your car to move off and your battery's dead. That's not good. So you want a second battery. Now this can be in the form of a portable power pack like this uh, Goal Zero over here and these generally have everything you need built in. They've got all the outputs, they've got inverters, they've got solar charge controllers and they've got inputs for charging from mains power or from your 12 volt socket in your car. Other thing you can do is what I've done and that's installing a proper dual battery system with a DC DC charger which charges the moment you start the car's engine at a high amperage from your alternator. We won't go into too much depth about dual battery systems right now because I've spoken about it fairly extensively in other videos, but in a nutshell, a DC-DC charger can actually charge up a auxiliary battery from your alternator in the engine bay while you drive, and that allows you to continue using all these appliances. The only problem is what happens when you're not driving and that's where solar comes into the discussion. Solar panels have become far more available, affordable and efficient over the years. So it's not just something that the elite can afford. It's something that's become a lot easier to obtain. And most DC DC chargers nowadays have some form of solar charge controller built in like the National Lunar one that I'm using. Most of those little portable power packs that you buy at like Builder's Warehouse also have solar charge controllers built in. So you don't need to get custom installation jobs done necessarily to even go that route. But that brings in the discussion of solar panels. And as you can see behind me here, we have a couple different options installed that we can look at and we're going to talk about the differences between a roof mounted solar panel and a portable solar blanket. What are the pros and cons? Let's jump straight into it. A portable solar blanket like this one is probably the easiest option. You can get them just about anywhere. Uh, they don't require any special installation. Um, they're available in a variety of different sizes from you know little 100 watt panels up to double, triple, quadruple that size. This one is a 200 watt solar blanket from Dag Outdoor. And what's nice about this is it comes with a variety of different connectors. So I can plug it in to a DC input on my little Goal Zero portable power pack, or I can use the Anderson plug and you know connect it straight to uh, the solar input on my vehicle that I've wired up. Obviously a massive benefit is that it is portable. I can leave it at home if I don't need it. It's easy to keep clean because it's not constantly exposed and if somebody else needs it, let's say a friend in your convoy that wants to top up their battery, you can easily just loan it out. The solar blanket got passed around on my recent Kalahari trip and everyone was able to make good use of it. The biggest benefit of a blanket in my opinion though is that it can be moved to an optimal position at any time. You don't always want to park your vehicle in the sun, you may want to be under a shady tree, but your solar blanket can be out in the sun facing in the right direction 
and getting great exposure. The negative, I suppose, is that it has to be set out and packed away every time, and it does take up packing space. That may be a deal breaker for some people who actually use their vehicle a lot for camping and don't want to have to set stuff up all the time. Your alternative then is a roof mounted panel, and that's what we're gonna look at next. This beast up here is a 430 watt panel on the roof, and it doesn't require any setting up at camp. It actually even charges while we're driving. It's always charging. And I was actually against the idea of putting a panel on the roof because I didn't like the idea of having extra drag, extra weight, all that stuff up there. Until I looked at the option of having a flexible panel which is actually stuck to the top of the roof. And that changed everything for me. The standard way of doing things on roof mounted panels seems to be to use rigid panels which are basically the same in terms of how they perform but are housed in an aluminium frame with a glass sheet on top. There are pros and cons to both. Some say that the rigid panels are supposed to last longer. That may be true when comparing to a flexible panel that is loosely mounted and can flex a lot causing micro cracks to form but in our scenario where it's going to be mounted properly it may be a better option than a rigid panel because we don't have the risk of the glass sheet being broken by branches, stones or baboons. Let me know in the comments below what would you do? All right, last piece of the puzzle before we go. We've come out here to Piri Solar on a very windy day, and we've got a massive 430 watt uh, solar panel that we're gonna be fitting to the roof with the help of uh, Piri Solar Distribution and Ian Klein Electrical. Now, I had no plans originally to put a solar panel on the roof. I thought ah, it'll create extra drag and extra weight and everything. I'd rather just use a solar blanket. And we will keep the solar blanket for, you know, if we want to park in the shade and keep the blanket elsewhere and put the blanket in the sun. But this panel is so light, I can pick it up with one hand, so light and so flat that, uh, yeah, we're just going to attach it straight onto the roof and it should be a perfect fit for the, for the canopy camper. So, yeah, let's go get it connected. And this should definitely keep us going for, well, indefinitely when we, we're out in the Karakhari camping for a few days at the same spot. So yeah, super stoked to get this on board. Piri Solar are the distributors for Victron and do all kinds of solar and electrical work on houses and buildings. So they are qualified electricians and know what they're doing. The danger with buying electrical components from outdoor stores is often that the outdoor stores are not qualified to do electrical work. Conversely, the danger of buying solar products from people who aren't used to doing work on 4x4s is that they don't necessarily know which products are suitable for smaller 12 volt systems. The great thing with Piri Solar is that they have experience on both sides of the spectrum with many of their Victron products going to the 4x4 industry. The Canopy Camper actually also has an Anderson plug already fitted on the roof specifically for connecting a solar panel. So there was no special installation needed for this aside from the panel itself. This panel was actually Sikaflex to the roof and once everything had set the following day, we could remove all the straps holding everything down and get our first look at the finished product. I admit I had one hiccup in the installation process and that was that I checked the wattage that the National Lunar Solar Controller could handle, and that was 600 watts, so we're all good there. However, I did not check the voltage that it could handle, and this panel was literally just a few volts too high for the National Lunar Unit. So at the 11th hour, literally the night before we were supposed to leave on our Kalahari trip, I had to make an emergency phone call, and the guys from Piri Solar came over and installed a Victron Smart Solar MPPT, which did the job perfectly for this panel and actually had a whole lot of benefits of its own. This MPPT is the 130 model, which means it's rated for 100 volts and 30 amps. So it's way within the threshold. And I have to give credit to the guys from Piri Solar and Inkling Electrical. They didn't even question when I said I needed help after hours. They came straight over and they did an awesome job.
The reason that the Victron unit was such a blessing in disguise is because it actually allowed me to run the two solar panels independent of each other. The solar blanket, when I plug it in, goes straight through the National Lunar uh, Solar Controller. Um, and that works in conjunction with the alternator, so when I'm driving. But when I get to camp, I can plug in the solar blanket to the National Lunar uh, Charge Controller. And then the one on the roof is connected to the Victron one and they're actually charging the battery at the same time. So between the two panels, I'm getting about 600 watts of, of, of energy, and that's pretty insane. In a situation like today, when we're not driving, we've just spent the whole night with the electric blanket on and the fridge is running and all that stuff, we may want to just top them up. And that's where the solar comes in. So we actually, if you follow this cable here, that the solar blanket uh, is connected to, we have a solar input down here. That's for the solar blanket. And when that solar blanket starts to get sun, you will see on the National Lunar Monitor that this will start saying uh, solar and giving the, the amperage there. And the reason it's coming through the National Lunar Monitor is that the solar blanket is connected directly to the National Lunar DC-DC charger, which is this unit back here. And that's pretty cool because it's the DC to DC charger from the engine bay, but it also has a solar charge controller, so you can kind of do the two in one. The reason that the one on the roof is not connected to the National Lunar is because it actually operates at a voltage that's too, not, too high for the National Lunar to manage. So what we did was we installed, you won't be able to see it here because it's under a lot of stuff, but we installed a, a, a Victron, I think it's the 130, um, smart solar controller and that allows us to use up to 100 uh, volts and up to 30 amps which is like plenty for what we're doing um, and then yeah when that solar panel gets sun you'll see that this solar charge controller kicks in and starts topping up the battery also which means because you've got two different MPPTs we can actually run them at the same time and get like 640 watts, which is pretty cool, right? So we've just um, given the panel a bit of a wipe to get the dust off and we've parked it facing into the sun with the roof open so we get the best angle and I'm getting like 378 watts, which is crazy. That's very close to what it's like rated to produce at maximum. I think if this was middle of summer and the sun was like right up middle of the day, right onto the panel, we'd probably get close to that 400 mark. So yeah, very happy with the way this is performing. The only downside of the Victron MPPT is that it didn't have a remote display like the National Lunar, but the app that connects to it works really well and gives me tons of data. So it's not really something I'm missing. So we discussed the pros and cons of the solar blanket. Let's do the same for the roof mounted panel. Starting with the pros, and the first one is really obvious. You don't have to connect it. It's always on there and it's always charging and it requires no work. Um, I just checked now on my phone and I'm getting like 295 watts from that panel on the roof and there's no extra effort required. And that's really all you need, even if the position isn't optimal or you have a little bit of shade, to have a bit of a charge trickling in, especially if it's just enough to cover what your fridge is drawing and anything that's kind of on during the day. It means that when you get to camp at night or when you're about to go to bed and you start switching on the lights and you start turning on heaters and stuff like that that actually draw more energy or maybe, you know, using an induction cooker, all that stuff, you're going to have a fully charged battery and that's what you want. The other pro is that it doesn't take up any packing space. Now this might be different for you if you want to put lots of stuff on your roof, this may be a deal breaker. For me personally though, I'm trying to avoid putting stuff on the roof. I want to reduce drag as much as possible. So this is perfect for me. The last pro is, is quite an interesting one and it, it, it takes me back to high school uh, science class when discussing electricity. Have you ever heard that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only separated or transferred? And if you think about it, the heat from the sun that's normally hitting the roof of your of your uh, of your rooftop tent or canopy, normally it's getting absorbed and it's making your tent really hot. Well, if that energy is being converted to electrical energy, you're actually going to avoid having that heat pulling through to your tent and 
for us who you know sometimes just want to take an afternoon nap and it gets nice and hot the panel is a way to turn that energy from the sun into something other than heat energy coming into your tent which is awesome now let's talk about the cons the first one's very obvious it takes up space on your roof and uh, if you want to put stuff there that might be a deal breaker but the other con is something that you may not think of and is something that uh, if you've used solar, especially if you've tried both the blanket and the roof mounted solar, you'll know this very well. And that is that a roof mounted solar panel is never really in the optimal position and you're never going to get the ultimate efficiency out of it unless you intentionally park directly into the sun and you keep changing position. When you park off at camp, you're not intentionally trying to point into the sun most of the time. Your main concern is setting up your camp in a way that you, I don't know, maybe if you want to shelter yourself from the wind or if you want to have a view in front of you, let's say parking off at a river or on the edge of a cliff, the solar panel is not your primary concern. And if it is, it might be a compromise for the rest of your camp. Solar blanket you can put wherever you want, roof mounted panel, not so much. And that means that if you parked in the shade or if you parked at the wrong angle, you're not going to get anywhere near the, the charge that you might want or what your panel is rated for. It may actually be that a 100 or 200 watt solar blanket is going to give you a better charge throughout your dead camp than let's say a 400 watt roof mounted panel like this just because it's in an optimal position. You can keep moving that blanket, you can keep getting your full charge throughout the day. Roof mounted panel, you might get an optimal time in the day when it's charging nicely but the rest of the day it might not be great. So that's something to consider. I'm in a very privileged position where I get to have both and try both. And it's really the best of both worlds. Um, I get that constant trickle charge no matter where I am or where I'm parked or what I'm doing. But if I want to have the blanket out and just top it up in perfect conditions in the sun, I can do that. And the blanket means I can loan it out to friends and still not worry about my charge coming from that roof. At the end of the day, I really don't need any of this stuff because the 40 amp DC DC charger tops up my batteries so quickly and I'm not one to sit at the same campsite for days and days and days without moving but it's nice to have and these panels are so light that there is no real negative now that it, it's paid for now that it's in. And that just about covers it. Uh, we're going to wrap it up there. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about the specific products that I'm using uh, for my solar setup check the video description below i'll put links down there if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more please subscribe to the channel we've got plenty more coming and if you'd like to learn more about the electrical system in the back of my vehicle or to follow along on some of our adventures we've been on uh, yeah please do subscribe we've got plenty of videos out there we've got plenty more coming and if you just go to my channel and look through the playlist we've got videos on the actual vehicle build and we've got tons of of uh, overlanding adventures out there too and you can get to see a little bit of my country and my continent which is really close to my heart as always thanks for watching we'll see you next time